Hello YouTube viewers. Uh, today I'm going to try to show you how to connect your telescope uh, to your computer, to your laptop. And it's going to be in a really cheap way. Uh, you don't have to buy any software and the cables that you need uh, are pretty much already included with the telescope. If not, you're going to get something that's going to be probably about only $15 tops. So, um, what's the first thing that we have to know about this? Um, let me go ahead and get the camera a little bit closer here so that you know what we're going to be doing. Okay, here we are. All right. I'm sorry for all that motion. But the first thing is your telescope has to be already aligned. Okay. Um, <coughs> Right now, what I just did or what I just performed was a fake uh, alignment of this telescope, so it is supposedly already aligned. Let's go ahead and imagine that we're outside and we're already watching the stars and it's already really beautiful outside, okay? So once, once this is aligned, uh, then you can go ahead and connect it to the computer. Now this telescope here which happens to be uh, the Celestron 6SE. Uh, you probably know it very well from my other videos. That's the one I use and it's really, really good. It, uh, uh, it already comes with a wire or a cable. Um, this cable connects to, the, connects to the handheld of the device here, of the telescope. And it also connects on the other side to a computer. Now, this is a connection for a serial port. Uh, most of the new computers that you uh, can see on the market right now uh, do not have this type of connection. So um, if you don't have that kind of connection, then you will have to buy a wire or a, a cable, special cable to, to convert to convert um, this serial uh, connection into a regular USB. Uh, it could be a 2.0 USB. Um, there is, there is a cable that is sold by um, Celestron and some other uh, big companies that uh, it's probably about, I don't know, off the top of my head, probably like $40, $45 or something like that. Now, I got this one here on, yes, I'm going to make them a commercial. Uh, I got this on Amazon.com and it was only $11 plus like probably $2 or something for shipping and handling. The good thing about this one here and any of the wires is that it will come with a CD for you to install the driver onto your computer. Okay, um, your original cable from the telescope also comes, or the telescope itself um, also comes uh, with uh, some software, software and drivers for all the things and, and, and functionalities of the telescope that you need. So make sure you install everything that comes with the telescope first and then you install the driver for your converter, your uh, USB to serial converter, uh, which is uh, I believe the wire's name or the cable's name is the RSR-2 or something like that. But um, okay, so what's the next step? The next step is um, basically to uh, install this and once you install it and one thing's really important um, I want to I want to show you this and I want to stress this a lot um, my computer here okay it has uh, one two three ports for the USB whichever port you use to connect this wire don't switch that if you connect it to this particular one, for instance, always use the same one. The reason for it is because if you try to connect it to a different one on the next night or, or, or I don't know, a couple weeks later, or you forget or something like that, some of these computers, depending on the software that you have or the version of the software, will try to install the driver again because you're actually plugging it in onto a different port. Okay? so. Go ahead and, and plug it in onto one port. Don't change it. Keep that one. And then once you do that, once you do that, uh, the system once it, 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 it installs the drivers, 
um, is going to tell you that um, your port is now going to be named COM5, COM6, COM7, whichever um, it applies to your particular computer or laptop. Okay, so about the software that controls the telescope. Okay, once again, uh, Celestron comes in with this the Celestron Next Remote. Okay, yes, you can control your telescope, you can do a lot of controlling. That's really nice. It works pretty good, actually. Um, but there is something else that you can actually do. You can watch the sky live on the computer while you're controlling your telescope and pointing at the object on your computer. Uh, this software is very well known. It's called Stellarium, but you have to make sure you have the latest version of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the computer. Okay, I hope uh, you can see it here. Uh, if not, I'm going to move the, the camera a little bit closer for you to see it. Okay, there we are. I hope um, it looks good. So once you're here, you will go ahead and open Stellarium. Okay. Once you do that, make sure you have at least this version, which is 0.11.2, not the earlier one. If you currently have one that you have installed, let's say I don't know half a year ago or something like that, that's okay. Just go ahead and delete it. Go into the website for Stellarium, and then download the newest version of it because the oldest versions do not support the controlling of the telescope very well or as well as this new one here. Um, if you're used to Stellarium then you might know that there's a lot of different gadgets and features for it. Uh, you can switch it into, um, let's see here, uh, you can switch it onto night mode which turns the computer uh, and, and the lights of it uh, red it turns them red and, and, and you can see them a lot better at night without affecting your, your adaptation of your eyes during the night. But what we need here is basically plug in the telescope onto the laptop. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in our wire. We can do that here real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the converter here. We have this, uh, there you are, the converter. Let's tie it up a little bit here so it's not going anywhere. And then, as I told you before, once you install your driver onto the computer, make sure you plug it in onto the same port every time, okay? Um, so, okay. Let's see. At this point, I'm going to move the camera so that you can see a little bit better what I am um, doing. Okay. So let's see. All right. There's our software here. Okay. Let me go ahead and do this here real quick. I'm going to try to make it in a way that you can see it. There you go. Um, here on the corner, on the corner of your software, if you go into configuration window, you open up that one there. Okay, you see there's a uh, main navigation tools, scripts, and plugins. There it is, plugins. That's the one we're going to use. Okay, let's go ahead and click on plugins here. Okay. Um, once we are on this on this window here, telescope control, you hit where it says configure, and if you notice, there is no telescopes attached to it right now. So we're gonna add one. We're gonna add one telescope, and um, of course, the window is gonna show us different different things. We're gonna name this one here. Um, let's go ahead and name it. Celestron six SE. 
Okay, if you don't, if you go down here, you notice it says COM1. Let's go ahead and take away one and make sure I got the right port for my telescope. I also need to make sure that the device model matches with my telescope. In this case, it's Celestron Next Star compatible. That means any Celestron should work with this. Okay. Scroll down for more details here and then just hit OK. Once you do that, you will see that your telescope is already here, but it says it's stopped. So, what you have to do is just get it started. Hit start. It says now connected. Now you can go ahead and close this window and then close uh, this other window as well. And then there it is. There's my telescope, and actually you have the name of the telescope here. Um, even if you if you actually go into your eyepiece, uh, of course there's no eyepiece or anything on the telescope because this is just a, a demo video. But if you go into the, into your eyepiece and you notice that that particular item, which is in this case uh, Cyrus, is not center on your eyepiece, you can go ahead and use your um, your pad, use your pad, uh, center it, center it, and then uh, replace your your star or realign your star on the telescope so that it'll it'll be accurate. Once you have that done, then your telescope is good to go, and then you can just pretty much point or click on any of the stars that you want, which uh, for instance right here, Rigel. Um, let's go ahead and do that one. In order for me to move the telescope onto that star, I have to click Control 1. And then, as you see this moving, you also see the telescope slew into that particular object and adjust in. And then, once again, you go into your eyepiece and make sure that is, um, that is in the center of the eyepiece. And now, one really good uh, advice that I can give you is that if you're going to align your telescope get yourself a wedge so you can do a polar alignment it's a lot more accurate and it works perfect with this particular software um, uh, the reason I'm saying that is because um, I, that's the way I do it and it works really nice so let's say right now I want to go into the great the great nebula in Orion and then once again I'm just gonna hit control 1 and my telescope is gonna be moving on to that particular location okay now notice that the telescope actually went all the way up and then started adjusting going down that is because the telescope is set up in a way that it always adjusts adjusted adjusts the um, the slewing on one direction even if you ask uh, the telescope to go to this star here Betelgeuse it's gonna go up here and then it's gonna go down so you always have a, a little bit more accuracy on on different objects one thing's really really interesting on, on this particular software which is free is that if you want to watch some satellites you can actually watch some satellites um, down here you click on this here uh, and then all of a sudden you have your satellites okay they are moving okay the satellites are moving so what do we do in order to see this satellite well you trace an imaginary line on, on, on how the satellite is moving whichever satellite it is and then uh, what you can do is cal calculate where this satellite is going to be next so you put it right here or somewhere around here and then you click control 1 your telescope is going to go there see uh, it's, it's going from the top to the bottom it's always going to be adjusting like that and once it's there you look at your eyepiece and boom there it is your satellite crossing just on your eyepiece. Isn't that great? 
um, you can see a lot of satellites. There's some of them that are more, more um, stable. They don't move as much as that one there. Um, let me see if I can find another one. Uh, that's kind of odd. I can't find nothing. So in that case, let's go ahead and move away the ground. Let's take away the ground. And voila, there it is. There's a bunch of satellites on the South Pole right now. Um, I wonder why. But there's a lot of activity on satellites on the South Pole. So eventually one of these satellites is going to move up here and then you can go ahead and, and, and move your telescope to whatever to whatever object you want to move it into. Um, another really good thing about this is that you can actually see the celestial grid um, and it tells you exactly what you can see and where everything is located. Um, one thing that I really do find um, uh, helpful for me particularly is uh, this here. This here shows you, let me close it up a little bit, so shows you all the nebula or nebulae that you can see in the sky. So for instance there's one here, you click on it and it tells you which one is it, that's IC1848. Um, I was observing one a couple nights ago that is this one here. The Cone Nebula. Okay, you click on that one, and guess what? Just hit Control One. Your telescope's gonna go there. And this eliminates the need for a map, for a physical map, out there uh, on the field, because you actually have the computer matching up with your sky, and everything looks really neat. Um, I hope this uh, had helped you. And if you have any questions or anything that, uh, that I can answer, any comments or anything like that, uh, feel free to put those down on the video. I appreciate your, uh, your, your watching the videos and, and commenting. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Bye.